matter what your situation is, you, right now, are in a position to love others. You were first given and loved by your Father who is in heaven, who is merciful. He has shown to you an unimaginable love and many gifts from God because of it. God, because of your sins, saw you as an enemy, and he gave to you not another cheek, not a tunic, not an amount of money, but God gave to you love in sending his son, Jesus Christ. God had taken what was bad and, and made it good. God took you and made you good, much as he did for Joseph in our Old Testament lesson. See, Joseph, he wasn't the greatest of brothers, shall we say, bragging to his older siblings how they are going to serve him the rest of their lives. So much so that they decide to kill him, to leave him for dead. They throw him into a pit, and then they sell him into slavery, being drugged barefoot in the sand there off to Egypt. While in Egypt, Joseph serves as a slave. He's thrown into prison. But yet God takes what's bad and makes it for good. Through all of it, God is preparing Joseph to serve Egypt, to serve the region, and ultimately to save countless lives during a seven-year famine. But nowhere is God taking what's bad to make good seem clearer than the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus' most horrible death is God's greatest gift. There on the cross, Jesus accomplishes absolutely everything needed to bring about the great good of your salvation. The worst event, the Son of God died on the cross is of the greatest gift and mercy for all of us. Because of Jesus' cross, we have been forgiven. Because of Christ, God promises you not only forgiveness, but also life and salvation in his eternal giving, in his eternal kingdom. God puts his promise into action, forgiving you by paying the price with Jesus' precious blood. Nothing is is won or lost by having or not having stuff. If you're not saved by having it, you're not not saved by not having it. You're saved by Jesus and Jesus alone. And because of Christ, we're free of the necessity of, of trying to earn eternal life, trying to earn anything else for ourselves, and what blessings we have is in the marker of this. And what that means is that what we do here in this life, what we do with the remaining gifts that God has given us, it's not meant to be a burden. It's not meant to be something that, that must be done to qualify you for heaven. But rather, the gifts that God has given to us are just that. They're gifts. But they're also opportunities. Opportunities to to love your neighbors, opportunities to, to love your enemies, opportunities to show them the love that we have been shown in Christ Jesus. So we measure not who we are based upon our stuff, but based on Christ alone. We look not to the things that we see, but to the things that we don't see. What you have or don't have doesn't change what God values in you. It doesn't matter if you live or die with nothing more than change in your pocket or being part of the 1%. Your salvation is accomplished only in Jesus Christ. In Christ, eternal goodness is freely given to you. God gives us the things of this world on top of that as a gift, given out from a spirit of, of freedom, not one of compulsion. The glory of these things is of one kind, but the glory is of the one to come is another. The gifts of heaven and eternal life are those, as Jesus says in our text, pressed down, shaken together, and running over into our lap. For they are given not by what we have now, but by Christ has done. And so when it comes to your stuff, give it all away or keep it all. Have everything or have nothing. It makes no difference on your salvation. All of it is nothing more than a gift, a thing that will soon fade, as our intro had said today, like grass and wither like a cut herb. 
As the old hymn goes, what is the world to me? It is nothing, not a thing of value or worth, because you have been given something of immeasurable worth, of Jesus Christ. You have been bought by the Lord of glory with his own innocent suffering to death. Regardless of stuff, God has given you grace from the cross, an eternal promise from God to you, because God loves you and sees things differently than we do. God gives grace and mercy and blessings to everyone, even to his enemies. He loves lavishly, making his enemies into his family and sharing without hope of receiving back. For what did you give back to Jesus for your salvation? And so what then? What of the things of the world? If they don't matter, or to say it a different way, if they are of no benefit to your salvation, what do we do? Well, we might as well use the gifts that God has given to you to benefit your neighbor, even to benefit your enemy, that he or she might share in the everlasting glory of Jesus Christ, that they would be called to faith and have life eternal. That way that we would do to others as Christ has done to us, shown love and given without, without expecting back with true grace and mercy. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Our service continues confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, for the whole church scattered throughout the world and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, your servant Joseph endured hardship and struggle, yet believed it would come to good. Give us such tested faith and bring all things to completion according to your purposes in Christ, who is the new Adam, who has brought hope to the world. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead all pastors, missionaries, and church workers in faithful service to your people with compassion and love. Bless every place where we hear your word and serve our neighbor in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help all parents who have brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism. Also bring them to him faithfully in the divine service, that he may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us, O Lord, not to expect self-interested rewards, but to love our enemies and to serve those in need. Put an end to all bitterness and strife, let forgiveness reign between each of us, even as Christ's blood covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold civil authorities and those responsible to you for the welfare of our nation, state, and communities. Help them steadfastly pursue the cause of justice and protect life from its beginning to its end. Guard all first responders and protect those who defend us here and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all of those who suffer. Deliver the sick according to your will, and sustain by your grace those troubled in body, body or soul. 
especially those on the prayer list of this congregation and those who name before you in our hearts. Give comfort to those who grieve, especially the family and friends of Damien Grossman. Grant your children patience and courage to endure every time of trial with hope in Christ. Lord, endure mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the gift of this blessed sacrament, O Lord. Give us a right heart as we prepare to eat and drink Christ's true body and blood, that by it we would be equipped to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, be with all of those who travel in the upcoming weather as we're experiencing. Grant them safe travel and a happy reunion when they return home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our service continues with the offertory on page 159. Please be seated. Join us online. We thank you for worshiping with us. The Lord bless and preserve your coming and going from this time forward, even forevermore. 